I'm glad that you have decided to join me for this little video of an orchid pot pourri. One has to be potted up, which is my Nani Puakea Dogashima one piece. And let me show you why. Look at this. We've got roots into the hob material. So I don't want to carry this over through the winter like this. I don't want the roots to get much longer. I'm going to deal with that now. It's going into a seedling setup with ceramis. And I have the Tulumnia hoxoniana that I'm going to mount on a ninja mount. Depending on the length of the video, I was going to show you my trichocentrum and what I'm thinking about it and why it's not included in this video at this point in time, although I'm so tempted. But let's get on with these candidates and thank you so much for being here. Should be a quick, straightforward procedure and fingers crossed, nothing happens that changes that. So basically, <laughs> this is awesome. This is the Fusarium infected Nani Puakea Dogashima. I have three pieces of it. The other two have as yet to form roots. But seeing as this one is trying again, we're going to deal with it straight away. And I'm not going to be too insistent about removing the hob material other than cutting it away from where the roots are not attached. It's got to be careful because the material is wet, which makes it rather heavy. And sorry about any noise from beyond the hedge right now. I can't stop what I'm doing. <laughs> Awkward, but yeah, sorry about that but I'm just going to cut that away and keep the roots intact. But this is looking promising that at least one piece has bounced back with an attempt at root growth. Super important. So what we're going to do is pretty straight forward. To save time, I've already prepared my little cup. I've got my two holes in there. My support is already wired up. Now we're just going to pour some ceramis into this pot. This is recycled stuff from back in the day, but I wanted to, in case you see white bits like this here, oops, maybe the reflection is these bits right here. Those are seashells that I put in a while ago. Never took that out simply because of the calcium that they provide. I don't know how effective they are at this point because it's been years and years and years that I've been recycling ceramics every time a pot comes up that has it in it I pick it out and then save it so whether they're effective or not I don't know needless to say they're in there just for a heads up and this one is just going to go in a little bit deeper I'm going to tie it up straight away before I deal with the rest of the layer. And it's looking very, very crude, but that's okay. If everything goes well, then I'll be potting up this piece anyway, come spring 2022. There we go. That's all there is to it. And now just fill her up. I'm not doing the submerged method today. Ceramis is super, super light and I can very quickly flush the pot through. The hob material is wet, so I'm not desiccating the roots with the dry ceramics. Something also to be mindful of when working with ceramic, that when it is dry, it will desiccate roots and draw water and moisture from the velamen. But seeing as this is not long, in this state, I'm okay with working with it dry. Ceramics also falls much, much better into place when you have it dry as opposed to working with a wet pot. So there's two reasons here why I'm not using the submerged method. A, it's unnecessary and ceramics doesn't just fall easily. There we go. I'm just going to leave that like that and then I'm going to flush it through. I want to be mindful of where the holes are because I've got orchids underneath this shelf. I don't want to get them soaking wet at this point in time. There we go. Simple and straightforward. First piece of Nani Puakea Dogashima is potted up and I am hoping that with this at least I have saved it if the others don't respond. 
Now, as a point of reference for future updates and everything of the sorts, here you can see two roots that have dried off. They are touching the ceramics. I just want to point that out. They have already dried off and it's not because of the ceramics. This is part of the glossarium that had these roots just stop growing. So not the ceramics, and that's just pointed out for future updates. Okay, let's get on with the Hoxoniana. This is going to be pretty straightforward as well. I'm hoping anyway, because I don't see any roots attached to this cork at this point, and that's how I want to keep it. It's doing really well on the cork. Let me show you. Look at all the little fans it's sending out. Two, three, and that is why I'm putting it on this uber, let's say, exaggerated sized mount. But as you can see, if the orchid is happy and gets moving, this mount is definitely the right size and should be long-term the right size as well because it is inorganic. If you are new to my channel, watching this for the first time, not understanding what on earth you're seeing from the mount perspective, well, let me say, whoops, welcome. Thank you for being here. I hope you find this interesting. Let me say that this is extractor fan material that you put in as a filter above your hob when you're cooking and it soaks up all the debris or the grease or whatever that you exchange every once in a while. At least that is what we do here in Spain. We have these filters for our extractor fans. Oh, we have more than one piece. Okay, but we can keep it together as it is. Look, one, two, there's three pieces on here at least, if not four. Oh well, we're keeping them together, not separating this out. And maybe I shouldn't talk with a needle in my mouth. <laughs> right, this makes it easy. At least they can stay together. The reason I am doing this front and back, there you go, my mount front and back has the filter, it's pretty much a wrap, is because of the high humidity that this orchid requires and a quick wet dry cycle as well, its climbing habit and everything. And I can go even lower. I have a tendency of mounting too high, so I need to remember that. Yeah, but because of the high humidity this orchid requires, where it comes from, there in the Caribbean. Here in my climate, I don't have the luxury of such high humidity in the air. I have to really, really work with my media and setups to make orchids happy that require such high humidity. And the reason I'm fiddling here now is because there's a little fan up here. I need to be mindful that it has a chance to grow then I'm gonna to have to do some light training. Yeah, so that's why this hob material is super, super effective for me. I don't have to worry about watering too hard in the winter. I can water from the back. So all I'm going to do now is in different areas of the twigs, let's call them that, because their rhizome looks like a twig, just tack the orchid to this material so that they won't move or orchids, I should remember. There is more than one piece here. I'm gonna try and avoid tacking roots. Don't want to squeeze those new roots out. Some roots have dried off, as we can see right here. So if I include those under the fishing line, then that's not a problem. But that's what I will be doing all the way up in different little points. And this is just to secure it. What it does afterwards, I don't care. If it decides to lean forward, do whatever, I'm not worried. The point is just to get it secured onto the mount and then the orchids, the pieces can do what they want as they grow. There we go, if I tie it now, it won't fall. So the tag that I got this orchid with said Hawk and Soniana. I believe it is a Hawk Soniana, but I just copied the same thing because my Google searches always gave me two opinions. So I just left it with what the tag said. I think it's a Hawk Soniana. And then it's just a question of 
giving this a little bit of a turn. And as it's living outside for the time being, I'm going to give it another little turn because it's going to go in a place that has a little bit of a ledge. Right, now, the idea being, I know, I know, again, if you're new to my channel, this looks really, really weird, but there's method to my madness because I can spray the orchid from the front during the hot months of the year, which now have passed, but as we're getting into the cooler months of the year and it still wants humidity, I can spray the back of the mound and give the roots the humidity that they need, but they will stay dry and the fans won't be soaking wet when it's cold. They will dry quickly as well. But in the hot months of the year, this is what I can do to spray the entire orchid and then leave the air to do the rest of it. And the material will deteriorate in a sense that it's going to look green. It's going to start collecting little bits of debris, especially when I address it with seaweed, then it'll go a little bit brown, but I don't care. For me, this has worked so well in the past year that I've been using this material that I believe this time I'm going to be able to make this orchid happy. Whereas in the past I had the Tolumnia variegata and she was in my classic Tolumnia setup like this, just with lava rock in a basket. She did not make it. There was too much spraying going on because she was going all over the place and aerial, so she died. In this instance, I believe we're gonna be good to go. And see how those roots are greening up nicely. And it's still early enough in the day, the fans will dry out. Amazing, very happy to see and get this done. Right, let's hang this one over here and I'm going to get my trichocentrum and show you what's going on with that one, just as a little tag on and why I'm not going to address it and put it in a pot. So you can see that this mound has already been in action for almost a year now. And this is what I've got left of my trichocentrum. They want high humidity. They want it as wet as possible during their growth phase. And I was thinking of potting it up because I've got new roots coming and I wanted to take advantage of them, but the cold weather is coming and I'm losing leaves left, right and center because the center here is a bit too wet from all the excess material, you know? So yes, it was a discount orchid and it came in a very, very sorry looking state, but I have to say that I, I'm so tempted to pot it up but I think it's best at this point in time just to leave it, to monitor it, because once it's potted up, I would have to keep the media much, much wetter to encourage the roots, which could then seep into this area of the orchid, meaning it would rot out quicker, and I can't afford that. You see, after almost 10 months of this orchid doing nothing, stalling after it arrived in my collection, finally, it grew this tiny little growth right here, and it's got roots and the roots are in the media and they're out and through on the other side. I don't know if you can see that, but right here, there's a root growing through, which is awesome. I only spray the top part and let the water leak down through the hob material. Then it also grew at this side, another new growth right here, and that rotted on me. Needless to say, this orchid wants to survive. It's a fighter because Despite having lost that new growth, it shot out from that failed new growth, another new growth, and look at the roots coming here. So that is why this is not included in the orchid potpourri as I had originally thought. I've changed my mind. I'm gonna leave it for the winter just like this. I've got roots that can be hydrated through the hob material down there in the media. Yeah, trichocentrum is not looking pretty, but there's something happening and I'm, I'm not giving up hope just yet. So sometimes I have to take a step back, rethink what I want to do, not go ahead as a schedule and plan it. Just think ahead the next seven, eight months. That is the case with a trichocentrum to the right there. And you can see the comparison now of how 
the hob material will change. As I treat it with seaweed, you can see the brown around there. So that looks all nice, fresh and spanky, but soon enough, it'll look like this. Nani pork here, I'm really, really happy about. I'm looking forward to seeing some roots coming in through the sides here. That's my next port of call. Next thing I'm looking for to see the root. This one especially growing and maybe making an appearance over here. Hoping that one piece at least is saved. And thank you if you found this interesting. <laughs> it was just a quick thing, but you know, I do my orchid pot puris, take you along. And I'm glad that you were here to watch. And then we're gonna watch the progress now. Very excited about the setup for my Hawkinsoniana. Really appreciate your time. Hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you so very much for watching. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.